Ever since video games first started getting really popular, there have been those special few that have inspired the rest. Games that can be considered genre-defining experiences, that through new technology or innovative ideas would set a new standard that future games would scramble to emulate. One of the more recent examples being The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This level of going anywhere in an open world is still incredible. No invisible barriers or impassable terrain, everything is climbable. No other game allowed for so much effortless traversal on this scale until Breath of the Wild showed the way. And to have that with one of the most impressive physics engines in any video game? 10 out of 10 recommendation, no question. But that is the thing about greatness. When something is stellar in one area, it tends to highlight where it isn't in another. Breath of the Wild is a novel experience, but that novelty comes at a cost of many areas of the game not being as fleshed out as they could be. A sequel to this game is definitely in order, which is thankfully already on the way. How things will end up there remains to be seen, but until then, I'd like to do a bit of my own brainstorming around how this gameplay style could end up. To briefly define the goal of this video, I'm not interested in predicting what Breath of the Wild 2 will be. It is fun to speculate, but I choose to approach my content from the perspective of thinking something would be cool, not that it is likely, in order to give it more lasting value. I'm also not trying to start a movement to shift that development team's goals to suit mine, because that would be stupid. No. This video's purpose is mainly to discuss the direction that I want this series to go in, mostly to resolve a few issues that I had with Breath of the Wild OG, but also to explore some fun potential areas that it could grow into, all with the ultimate goal to have some fun brainstorming. Now, obviously Breath of the Wild is an open-world game, a genre whose primary strength is exploration, freedom, go anywhere, do anything, boundless potential, and Breath of the Wild does this better than any other open-world game I've played. But it also suffers the flaws of that genre in equal regard, the primary one being that when the player can go anywhere in any order, it limits the structure of the combat and the narrative. The combat in particular I want to focus on, because on the surface it's very appealing. Between the physics engine and open environment, it encourages players to get creative in how they deal with enemies. Anytime I asked the question, does this work, it was almost always met with a resounding yes. Can I make moblins throw bokoblins off cliffs? Yes. Do choo-choos dissolve in water? Of course that works. Cuckoos will kill me when I hit them. Does the same hold true for enemies? That is art. Unfortunately, things like that only happened when I wanted to get creative. And oftentimes, there aren't many avenues to do that. In those moments, combat in this game feels bland, repetitive. Dodge attack, flurry rush, repeat until victory. Or even worse, dodge attack, don't use flurry rush, but still repeat until victory anyway because this touching system is so simplistic. Now, to be fair, repetitive combat is a fairly common issue for this genre. But other games have learned to combat that with the use of skill trees that constantly grant new abilities to use in battle. That way the repetition evolves across a long period of time, making it less noticeable. That is something that Breath of the Wild currently lacks. With the exception of Robosa's Fury and the upgraded stasis rune kind of, fighting enemies never really evolves in this game, which I would argue is to its detriment. Now I'll happily admit that this is a rather uninspired thing to wish for, but I feel like this new Zelda style would really benefit from some kind of skill tree approach. Not a traditional one, the last thing I want is an XP system here, but perhaps tying it to the spirit orbs that Link receives after shrines. It would be easy to decrease the cost of health and life upgrades from 4 orbs to 2, and free up the remaining orbs to unlock neat abilities. Just some offhand ideas, traditional Zelda attacks like the Helm Splitter and the Backslice would work well, throwing shields could be cool, using Magnesis and Stasis on arrows would be so epic, and that's only considering mechanics that are already in the game. Any new runes or items could spice things up even further. Having a system like that could accomplish quite a few things. 
Most obviously, it would spice up encounters, adding more depth to a system that desperately needs it. But it would also give a greater sense of progression to the entire game, while making finding and completing every shrine far more appealing. Plus, it would apply a much-needed restriction to the Flurry Rush ability, as a move that powerful should really be some kind of late-game unlock. Moving on from combat abilities, I feel like with all the odd monster bits and items that can be found in the game, Breath of the Wild has the makings for a phenomenal crafting system. Some kind of Monster Hunter gear creation with weapons and armor would fit in perfectly, half the groundwork is already there, but it could be taken so much further than that. I want to see some kind of spell scroll system. I feel like that would fit so well thematically with the breakable weapons. In a similar fashion to how he cooks food, Link could combine certain monster bits as components for various spells. One to make trees grow in an area, or to cause boulders to rain from the sky, to call or call off a lightning storm. That could expand even further into enchanting, crafting different buffs to apply to one's favorite weapons. In fact, combining that with some kind of costly repair spell would alleviate every frustration I have with weapon degradation because the current gameplay loop requires Link to fight enemies to replenish his arsenal, to replace what breaks. But fighting enemies breaks the weapons he already has, which makes the loop counterproductive. It's an endless cycle. And there's some weapons, the champion ones especially, that I don't want to break. They're fun. But ironically, I never end up using them because of that. But with something like this, now there'd be incentive to hunt specific creatures down to gather components for the fun spells and to repair and improve the player's preferred weapons, while also replacing the secondary weapons that do break. As an ultimate example, there could be an unbreakable spell that could be applied to any weapon, but only one could be active at a time, for balance purposes. I know I would scour Hyrule to tailor-make my own overpowered weapon. Forget the Master Sword. I want to dump 50 star fragments into enchanting a new weapon for heroes to pass down. The Master Mop. That would be glorious. So those are the two features that I'd look towards when considering how to enhance the open world side of this game. But that doesn't mean this video is over. Because this isn't just an open world game. This is an installment in the Legend of Zelda series. Now. What makes a franchise what it is, what is expected from games that belong to the same series, is obviously going to boil down to personal interpretation. Depending on who is asked, Bravely Default is a truer Final Fantasy game than most of the recent Final Fantasies. And while I don't hold that same view, I think the overall gameplay of a series can, and sometimes really should, evolve over time, I do think that there are certain qualities that should be kept around as they are what gave that series its identity. This is going to differ wildly from person to person, but I've always seen the Zelda games as being the story of a hero's growth. Every game sees Link starting as a fairly useless kid, and through adventure and experience, becoming the hero of Hyrule. This theme is reflected in the gameplay of past entries. Link is constantly finding new items and unlocking new abilities, the player grows and gains new tools that allow them to defeat whatever ultimate evil is in their way. And from my perspective, that was nearly gone in Breath of the Wild. Link is already the hero here. Once I got a hang of the game's combat, there was nothing that could stand in his way, even if he just woke up. Gone was the excitement of seeing a fancy chest in a dungeon and wondering what new item I was getting. Gone was the satisfaction of filling out these inventory menus and seeing how far I'd grown. To be clear, neither of which really lessened the quality of the game, but I still miss those feelings. A lot. This will never be one of my favorite Zelda games because those are elements that I treasured in this series. That's what made Zelda for me, why I revisit these games. To experience that anticipation of what's to come and the satisfaction of seeing how far I'd gotten. Zelda did that for me better than anything else, and I would love to have that feeling back. So, that begs the question, where does that feeling come from? Well, a good chunk of it is the narrative. Wind Waker is the easiest to point to in that regard, as its first half centers around such a strong goal. But trying to brainstorm narratives would take forever, and quite honestly, after Breath of the Wild's story, or rather lack thereof, 
I'm ready to settle for a story that I care about at all for the sequel. No, I want to talk about the gameplay side of things. And I think the fundamental reason that Breath of the Wild lacks in this regard is because it uses a different kind of progression system. One more focused on the player's skill and knowledge growing rather than Link himself, which is not a bad thing. Many fantastic games thrive off of systems like that. But those also have more complexity and higher skill ceiling, so it works better there. And regardless, I don't think Breath of the Wild should push in that difficulty-focused direction. No, for Breath of the Wild, I think the best path forward would be an equal mixture of both the player and Link growing. Which, again, skill trees, that's why they work. They could play a major role in alleviating that, but I would also put forward that item acquisition should be an important aspect of progression. This is a Zelda game, after all. Now, there can't be the old system of needing future items to access certain areas, as that goes against the open-world design. But what does work for progression in this genre are abilities. Toys for the player that make interacting with the world easier and more fun. Rivali's Gale and the Master Cycle Zero are two decent examples of this. Mobility and power spikes that feel genuinely earned. The bike especially, an ultimate reward after an epic sky duel, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And I know it's been suggested by literally everybody, but another potential upgrade like that could be the hookshot. Having the aerial mobility of hooking onto a surface and letting momentum carry Link forward would be open-world bliss. I love the possibilities of what that could do for combat, for puzzles, for exploration. Simply combining it with the slow-motion mid-air archery mechanics would be bonkers. Not to mention the item itself has room for expansion. I could easily see some hookshot upgrade that tethers two objects together just cause style, allowing for hilarious hijinks like stasising a boulder and launching it with a moblin attached. There are so many potential tools that could open up the game like that. An ocarina that controls the weather, pegasus boots for even more speed, master sword equivalents for the other weapon types, something that charms monsters, invisibility, burrowing, underwater traversal, flights, permanent bear mount taming packs of wolves, shape-shifting could return. I'm not suggesting that they all happen at once, but any of them could. And none of these hypothetical unlocks would be required to beat the game, but they would be so much fun to use and earn, giving an added sense of growth to the game's progression in addition to the players, and adding to the players in turn as they are granted more tools to play with. If that was wrapped up with a story that hasn't already happened, more narratively driven side quests and some proper dungeons, it wouldn't be my favorite Zelda game, the nostalgia is simply too strong for this series, but I would absolutely adore Breath of the Wild 2. And despite my mixed feelings on Breath of the Wild OG, I do want to clarify that I consider the overall change of gameplay style to be absolutely worth it. Few series are willing to be this bold with changes, and I commend Zelda for taking that risk. There are so many new directions the series can go now. The sky is the limit, and even that limit could be broken. Where it will lead, I don't know, but I am very excited to find out. As it says in the title, this is a remake of an old video I made a few years back. I've been redoing all of my content recently to get a standardized level of quality on the channel and take a healthier, more professional approach to the website. And this one in particular did not fit in with the rest. The original was more review than concept, and I wanted to shift the focus more towards my excitement of what this series could be, as well as focusing on more interesting topics. While I'd love more enemy variety and weapon types, better voice acting, pettable dogs, that kind of stuff is obvious, easily statable. These days, I'd much rather discuss things with a bit more nuance to them. Now again, the Breath of the Wild formula could be taken in many exciting directions. So, in the interest of speculating over the upcoming sequel and prodding the engagement of this video higher, why not share any ideas that you all have? Fun ideas for mechanics, boss fight and dungeon designs, new potential rooms, maybe that futuristic setting that's been shown from time to time. Please elaborate on those concepts in the comments below. If you all enjoy my brainstorming sessions, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking that notification bell. And for any that really liked it, consider joining the channel. I don't run ads on my videos, as they are annoying and mess with the flow of my content, so any support there would be quite helpful. Otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all soon with another video. Goodbye.